Okay, this is where we need our input sheet. And what views do I need? So if you go to the drawing, and I'm going to go over here and just look at it, and maybe I can pop over there. Um, if I go, and I'm going to just look at this, What? and I know you can't see it right now. So if I go down to the drawing portion, create the drawing to show the assembly. I don't see anything showing a preview of this drawing. So I might need to put that in there and let me write myself a note. So view layout, you know how we have that? I'm going to show you in this video the views that I want. I need to add that in there. Okay, so I'm going to place views, a base view. Now, if I start with the V clamp, that's going to go into my scale, and I don't know if my clamp is going to be the same scale, but let's see. So I don't want the clamp. I want the base. And that looks a little bit small. Maybe we could go to three quarter. And if you don't have three quarter, type in three space slash space four, and it is in the same kind of format as the rest of them. That looks pretty good because I have to have three views. I have this one for the profile. I have to have the top one, which is pretty deep, for that hole in the top. And any view that has a hole in it, I've got to have that view and the right side view. So make sure that these are oriented correctly. If they're not, you may need to go back and reorient your base view so that these flip correctly. I need to see those holes. Now this is show hidden lines, three quarter scale, and we don't need a label. That's going to pop right into my template here. Let's go ahead and put our clamp in now. And that's clamp and we're at three quarter scale. I've got my whole front profile and I got the top because I need that for a hole and I can put the depth here so I can do this in two views. And that is hidden line showing three quarter scale. So I don't have to put a scale note as note number three. I'm not changing the scale from the original part. Now I don't even have views of this. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my automated center lines. I'm grabbing every view in the entire sheet. If you grab anything that's not a view, like I grab that edge, it will not do automated center lines. So make sure you've only grabbed views. Right click automated center lines. Now, why did it put these in? I don't really want those. Well, I need one to show the height to the first radius inside, but it's because I modeled this extrusion with radii in it. So maybe I put this on the left, maybe I put it on the right. I'm going to take this one off and just put it on the left here. And if I need one on the right, I can put one in. The other thing that I'm seeing that I don't like is all these tangent edges. This is my base view. How do I know that? And the model tree is the first one, and every projected view here is from that. So I can right-click and edit right from there and go to Display Options and take off Tangent Edges, and every other one updates to that. This one, too. You see these Tangent Edges? Are, and here are some axes that I just removed. And I can click on and delete these. Do I need these axes up here? And those tangent edges sometimes are a little confusing. So I have to select the base view. And you can see that from the model browser. Right click and edit the base view. And then the projected views will follow suit. How do I know that? So let's go back to a component right here. This little thing right here. If you're in a projected view and you don't want it following the base view, you want it to do something different, you can deselect this. This says style from base. And that looks a little bit more clean to me. So I'm going to save that. Now we have some symmetry lines. 
So I'm going to select on this view. I know it has symmetry in it. Select on the view first, then start your sketch. I'm going to draw a line in here that's going to go beyond the view in each direction. Now I want it to be I want it to be on maybe this axis. So can I make it coaxial with this axis? I don't have anything projected for it to be coaxial with. Maybe I want to project this edge and make it right on that end point. That would be concentric. This line, I'm sorry, coincident. This line on that point. That's a coincident constraint. If I had two lines, that would be collinear. Now that makes that set right in the middle. Now, if this moves, I don't want the center lines for this or the symmetry lines for these moving. So I do this view by view and say finish a sketch. Now, remember, I could change the properties of this in, in this sketch or I can do it out here in the drawing. So I'm going to make another sketch on this view because I, if I made it on made the symmetry lines on both. If I move this view, it's going to move off the top view. So I'm going to project geometry first. And then I'm going to draw a line through this one all the way through the part, even though it has a gap. And then I'm going to make that collinear with that axis. And finish that sketch. And I'm going to select this view and start a sketch on that one. Now I want to project geometry, let's say of this center point, because I'm going to have a horizontal and a vertical symmetry line on this one. So vertical, and horizontal, because I'm spotting that. Now I need to make that coincident with the center point with the vertical and the center point with the horizontal. And now when they turn purple, I know that they're absolutely centered and fully located. And it says four dimensions missing. Why does that say that? Because it doesn't know where the length of the line is and where they start and stop. And I don't really care about that in these sketches. But I know that if I move this view, those are going to move with it now, independent of this. If I move this view left and right, everything that's projected will move. And the same thing with this one. Now, to get all these lines and change them into a center line or chain style, I'm going to select all three, holding down control, all three sketches, right click, and go to properties. If you select anything but sketch lines, it will not let you show properties. And then I'm going to go to chain and say OK. And now I have center lines on all. Save that portion. Let's go to annotate. And that's where we have our symmetry symbols. Symmetry, with no leader. And you can't really see it here, but this is a horizontal one. So I'm going to say OK here, and then it lets me place these. So this one here, make sure you have the symmetry line extending beyond the symmetry symbol, one above and one below each view. And it snaps to that line. So it can't be off-centered, and I have one here. Symmetry is view dependent, so you have to do this in every view that is symmetric. Now, if I put this in, another one in, and I try to rotate it, and I'm going to show you why I do not do this. I can't just, I can't put in a number. So I'm going to insert a sketch symbol, and I'm going to change that to a rotation of 90 degrees and put the ones on the right and left in like this. I have this one, and I have this one. Now our views are set up and we're going to start retrieving dimensions.